Welcome to the Americana Bistro Grill. I'm your host, Roberto Alvarez Galloso, serving you the best in Americana music. And for me, it is a pleasure and an honor to have one of the divas of Americana music. There have been many other divas, but I can't go through the list being too long. But Alice <laughs> Wallace is one of the top 10 divas of oh. Americana music. And she recorded an album which is destined to be a classic in the 21st century. And she recorded it this year. The album is called Here I Am. I love the album. I, I so fell in love with it. Thank you. My question was, what inspired you to record? What was the inspiration? What was how what was the inspiration in recording? Here I am. Well, as a songwriter, you're always writing, you're always processing your life and and going through the different phases. And this, you know, particular album really is a very personal one for me. Not all of my albums have been inspired by so many personal things. Sometimes my albums have been more about storytelling and life on the road and meeting people and and but this one, you know, I moved to Nashville four and a half years ago, right before the pandemic hit and shut mm -hmm. everything down. And so it's been a just a very um, eye opening and introspective few years since moving here. And so most of these songs are very personal and about things that I was going through, heartbreak I was processing, changes in my life that I was processing. And, uh, you know, I tried to write songs in a way that people might hear some of their own struggles in them also. Great. You already answered one of my other questions before I, I, uh, before I was asking. But there was one that really caught my eye. Mm -hmm. You talked about one of the songs, Here I Am, being the most difficult. And um, my my question is, what was the most difficult song that you found? What was the most difficult song of the album, Here I Am, that you had to record that really touched you personally, that you had to really deal with it? You know, I think by the time you record a song, a lot of times you know, it's, you've processed a lot of it. Although um, I will say probably the most personal song on the record is the one called I Was Wrong, which was a song about it, my heart being broken very badly. And uh, that song is a special one. It was, it was, di it's, it was difficult for me to sing for a long time, although it was not difficult to write, which was interesting. It's one of those songs that I, when I play it at shows now, I tell people it's like, it's one of those songs that it almost seemed like the song existed and I just had to like pluck it out of the air. It was already written and I just had to write it down. Like it was like my, you know, my whole spirit had already written the song and I just had to open my mouth and sing it. And that doesn't happen very often. Usually I'm struggling with the lyrics and I'm rewriting and I'm trying to make it sound exactly the way I want it to. And this song just sort of spilled out because it was so um powerful to me really in the moment um and so it was hard for me to sing at first because it felt so real and so it was just exactly what i was feeling in that moment and um and i will say that that that's the one song that when we recorded it in the studio and i heard how beautifully the band played it like at the end of the first take i was like crying and i had to like choke back tears and i had just i was like and it was more because it was so beautiful than it was painful mm -hmm. but just to hear it brought to life in this way that I just had never imagined by, uh, you know, and this recording experience was incredible that we can talk about if you want to, that recorded it in Nashville with session players who I'd never met before. So I was very, you know, I was nervous and so, just so anxious about like whether I would like what they did with my songs. And after that very first song, I was, I was in tears and I was just like, this is, this is beautiful. This is exactly what these songs need. So. Great. Now, I saw all of your videos in YouTube. Okay. I, I visited your channel many times. Yes. I saw all of your videos. I've even heard, I've even heard Here I Am five, maybe 10 times. Yeah. I already have my, my CD player even knows the melody and the words. <laughs> yeah. And of course, I love the album. Yeah. You did a duo with Melody Walker and Crystal mm -hmm. Bowersox. How was the, how was the, 
How was the experience singing with such illustrious singers like Melody Walker and um, Crystal Bauer Suxon? How were you able to get the video? Yeah, filmed you know, it up and running. Um, so both of those women are friends of mine, which I'm very happy to say, and and we co-wrote songs for this new record. So Melody and I have been friends for about a decade. We re we met out in California years ago playing a show together. And as soon as she opened her mouth to sing her first note, I was a huge fan. I, she is one of my favorite singers in Nashville. And, but we hadn't ever written a song together until I moved here and she had already been here. She moved here a few years before I did. Um, so we got together, we wrote the song Bonfire for the record. And, and really we wrote that as like a vocal powerhouse song. And on the record, she's singing the harmonies on the recording. Um, and then Crystal Bauer Sox is another woman that I met shortly after moving to Nashville. And just on a whim, I asked her if she'd ever want to write a song with me. And she said yes, which was very sweet of her. Um, and so that was the beginning of our friendship, was writing the song for my record, which is called When This Song Ends. Um, you know, when we got together to write the song, we didn't know if we would like it or if it would end up on any record. And I just loved it. And I wanted to put it on my record. And um, she didn't end up coming into the studio. I think she was on the road when I was recording this record, so she couldn't come in and sing it. But after, you know, as I was getting ready to release the record, I wanted to do some live videos and I thought it would be great to be able to sing these songs with the women I wrote them with. So I asked Melody and Crystal if they would be willing to come into the studio and sing them with me and they both said yes. And in fact, Crystal went above and beyond and she actually f did all the filming. She brought all of her cameras and she set up the filming. It was just so kind of her. Um, and so, yeah, they're both phenomenal singers that I'm very lucky to call my friends who helped contribute some beautiful songs to my record. Great. How did you get started in the music industry? How do you see yourself right now in the music industry? And even though we cannot predict the future, how do you see your future in the music yeah. industry as, it's, as it's, it continually evolves? It does continually evolve. And, you know, I, I got started just, I mean, I started singing as soon as I could talk. And when I was a teenager, I picked up the guitar and uh, both my parents played guitar and sang and I wanted to join in on the sing-alongs. And so I just started learning guitar as a teenager. And as soon as I knew a few chords, I started writing songs. I mean, and then I just kind of took off from there. It took a, it took a while before I got up the guts to really, um, do this as a living you know I got had jobs I always just thought maybe well I'll sing on the weekends or I'll sing a gig every once in a while but I just fell in love with it and eventually I decided that life was too short and I had to decide you know I had to try to make this my living and so I quit my job about 10 years ago and I've been doing it full-time ever since and just hit the road trying to make fans and play every show that I could and and then four and a half years ago, moved to Nashville, made the big move. And and I love it here in Nashville. It, there's a beautiful community of songwriters and other artists that you can collaborate with and who inspire you. And, um, and you know, I'm not really sure what the future holds, but um, I know it holds music in some way or another. You know, like the, the longer I do this, the more I realize, you know, that not, not everyone finds huge success with this this industry is very difficult and you can mm -hmm. never predict whether all of your hard work will pay off in any big way and all you can do is just keep making music that you enjoy making and hope that it you know it it makes your life better in some way and so i'm 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 still trying to you know investigate and um experiment with what my life looks like when it comes to music. Um, so we will see, but I'm just going to keep uh, writing songs and, and singing songs. And I love being on the road. I love getting on stage every night and singing songs for people. It's my favorite thing to do. And so I'm just going to keep doing that and hoping that people keep responding. Yeah. In addition to seeing all the other music in your YouTube channel, I managed to stumble across your rendition of Ave Maria. Yes. The Ave Maria. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be talking about two songs here. One is the Ave Maria, and the other one is the Rolling Stone of Texas. Mm -hmm. But the Ave Maria was the one that got my attention. 
Mm -hmm. There have been two people who have been able to do the Ave Maria and do it with such an emotion <laughs> that it leaves and has left tears in the eyes of many people that have seen the Ave Maria. Mm -hmm. I am one of those who have who actually tear up when I saw when I heard the Ave Maria. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to deny it. <laughs> and many people I know who have watched your videos and even watched the Ave Maria teared up too. You are one of them. And there was another singer, a Cuban singer. She was a pop rock ballad singer in Cuba. She now lives in America. Mm -hmm. And she was also an opera singer. But again, who thought about opera in the 50s, 60s, and 70s with mm -hmm. certain exceptions. But she was all-encompassing in Cuba, and she's also all-encompassing here in America. Her name is Maggie Carles. She will, right now she's in her 80s. Oh, wow. But when she did the Ave Maria in Cuba, everybody teared up. So we had so you had this and you had the, you were able to do the same thing. What inspired you to sing the Ave Maria in your Christmas special? In German and in Latin. Right. Well, you know, and it was interesting. I've always, I've always considered myself a singer first and foremost, you know, I feel like I'm a singer and then a songwriter um, because singing is what I love to do more than anything. And Ave Maria is one of those, you know, melodies that is just so incredibly beautiful and yet yeah, like I have been so moved by other versions of Ave Maria that I've heard and I just had always wanted to try to sing it. You know, I don't uh, claim to be an opera singer. I'm not an, I'm not any kind of trained opera singer, but I pretend to be an opera singer sometimes. <laughs> and, and I just wanted to try it. And, you know, and I had always heard the Latin version and it wasn't until I was kind of researching before that show and teaching myself the song that I saw that there was also a German version that the, and that the song actually didn't start out as a Catholic song that it started out in uh, like a music or in an opera, right? I believe it was a, maybe a German opera mm -hmm. that actually featured that song first. And then the Catholic church loved the melody also. And, and so originally the, the, the German words are the original words. And then the Latin words were written later for, for the church services. And so I thought it would be really interesting to do both versions to show, you know, where that song has come from and where it has gone, even though the Latin is much more famous is that's the one that you mm -hmm. hear more people sing. And so I just think it's a beautiful song and I just wanted to sing it because I think it is moving. You know, I'm not really a religious person, but I, but those kind of songs, like for if anything, music is my religion and a beautiful melody mm -hmm. moves me so much. Um, and so I just wanted to, attempt to put that out and see if my version added anything to it no but your version really touched a lot of people well thank you it touched a lot yeah. of people <laughs> i cannot i i i cannot all go into details <laughs> well it's very the same with the same thing was with the rolling stone of texas mm -hmm. you'd also did a yodeling part in the yeah in the rolling stone of texas yes I'm going to confess something that I don't usually confess. Okay. But the Rolling Stone of Texas, the yodeling section, took me back many, many years ago. Okay. In the 1970s. I was, in, I was born in Ohio to Cuban parents, and I was an exchange student representing the United States in Germany. Okay. That was in 1973. That's where I first got the exposure to the Ave Maria. But there was plenty of yodeling, and there even there were even some of the German singers and Swiss singers because I ended up crossing the um, the border between Germany and Switzerland because I was practically practically next door mm -hmm. to the border. Yeah, you simply had that the passport, the marks, and changing of the francs. <laughs> yeah, and there are a lot of yodeling in the music. Yeah, and there was not just the, the traditional Alp music of Germany and Switzerland. But there are also other yodelers from like Mexico. They have the music called Musica Norteña, mm. which is the north, which is the world, sort of like a country music. 
Yeah. And some of them had, there was one group that I don't, re I, I don't remember the name, but I do know that they did a lot of yodeling in that, in their music. Wow. And some of the, and some of the, more, the Mexican Norteña music, the yeah. ones that are in the border with Texas and Arizona, New Mexico would have the yodeling and you got it really, really, really great. You, I actually went back, I, I, I went back, I, I went back to the year 1973 as an 11 year old in Germany. <laughs> well, I'm glad that I took you back there. Because and I loved it. I loved it. How were you able to get the yodeling in the Rolling Stone of Texas? Well, I've been yodeling for many years. I, I taught myself to yodel in college because I was a huge fan of Jewel and Jewel yodels. If you've ever heard Jewel yodel, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. And I just decided I wanted to learn how to yodel. So I've been doing it for years and years. And I discovered that Rolling Stone from Texas song when I started touring in Texas and people found out I could yodel. They were always asking me, do you do any Don Walser songs? And that's who recorded that song, originally wrote it. Uh, his name's Don Walser. He actually passed away in the 90s, I believe. But he was a big figure in bringing a lot of classic, like a kind of a renaissance of classic country music to Austin and Texas in like the 80s and 90s, and including some phenomenal yodeling. I mean, just beautiful voice. And so people started requesting Don Walser. And so I looked him up. I had never heard of him. And I found that Rolling Stone from Texas song. And I was just blown away. It's just, it's such a fabulous song and I love it. And now I sing it at so many shows all the time because it's one of my favorite yodels to do. Um, and I love that they actually called Don Walser the Pavarotti of the Plains, which I think is just a, such a beautiful nickname. And so I'm just trying to keep his uh, tradition alive by singing his song and among, you know, there's a few other yodel songs that I do occasionally, but Rolling Stone from Texas is one of my favorites. Yeah. Before finishing it, before the before the next question, I wanted to add also in yodeling, the, taking me back to Germany and Switzerland, and also yeah. this Mexican group. Before my family uh, lived in Cuba, they were they were in Spain. My mom's side of the family was from the Basque country. My father was from Galicia. Mm -hmm. Before going to Cuba, and then before coming to Ohio, and then coming to Florida. Why the family tree? Because in the Basque country of Spain and France. There were plenty of yodeling there as well. That's great. There was, pl there, there was plenty of yodeling because some of the music of the Basque country of Spain and France resembles mostly this musica norteña or mus um, norteño music mm -hmm. that you see in the north of Mexico. And some of it even resembles country music. I love that. And yeah, some of it even resembles polka. Right. Yeah, I could hear that. I could, you know, because also, yeah, German and Swiss music has, you know, the polka. And yeah, and that's where it came from and it yeah. spread. And I mean, there's many folk music traditions that have some kind of a yodel, some kind of a vocal flip, mm -hmm. you know, in various different forms. And it's really interesting to hear in the different regions how that kind of takes shape. Um, and but really, yeah, I mean, our cowboy yodeling really came from immigrants from Germany and Switzerland and the Bavarian mm -hmm. region that came over to the, you know, yeah. to the, the States and brought it with them. So. Yeah. And there was even one part of the Basque country of Spain. There was a traditional song called Doce Cascabeles, 12 uh, bell, 12 horse bells, mm -hmm. celebrating the life of peasants and everything. And there was a, a yodeling part in the song too. Many oh. Basque artists of Spain, yodeled with the song and they even yodeled it not only in Spanish but they also yodeled it in Basque because Galicia they speak Galician as well Basque country they have their own language and right. Catalonia have their own language yeah and the Basque one of Doce Cacabeles they did it in Spanish and they did it in Basque with the yodel oh, I will have to look that up I'm always interested I don't know I don't know if the recording is in YouTube right I'll, I'll try to do I some do stuff know I can find it I do know that, may, I hope you find it because I've been trying to find it. I managed to get it without the yodeling. Okay. I have it without the yodeling. Okay. But there was one time that they that some distant relatives in the 60s and 70s brought me a 45 EP record from Spain of the 60s mm -hmm. and 70s with the yodeling. Oh, that's so great. But since I've moved many places, I don't know where it is. <laughs> right. So... Oh. 
I have, I'm still trying to find it, but I did, but I did love it. And I wanted to congratulate you on the yodeling and also on the Ave Maria. Where can we find your, where can we find your material? Well, my website is alicewallacemusic.com and there you can find links to find it most places. It's on all the streaming services. I'm on all the social media platforms. So yeah, I'm pretty easy to find if you type my music in. <laughs> yeah. I, I do, for my public, I do recommend, please visit alicewallacemusic.com, visit her on all of the digital platforms. And also at the same time, please visit the Americana Bistro Girl. We're under the, we're under Alvarez Gallos. Alvarez Gallos is like a, a channel for everyone in YouTube. And uh, please visit us. We're not only on YouTube, but we're also on other platforms like Rumble, Brighton, Bidshoot, Gab. We're even in vcontact.com for some of my distant relatives, like 10th, 12th, 14th cousins in Spain. And plus some of my, some of the friends that I met while in Germany and in Switzerland that we keep in touch with Facebook. And of course, we are also on Zelle as well. Without much, and before I leave, our section here, we recorded our section here using only solar energy. Mm. We're not, we do not have any electricity in my office right now. We're using solar energy. I love that. And we're using wind power. That's for those who have doubts about solar energy and wind power. Okay, perfect. This is Roberto Alvarez Galloso from the Americana Bistro Girl to the world. Peace in, peace out, and peace everywhere. <laughs> Until next time.